So our next talk will be on neural networks for quantitative resilience prediction. So hi everyone, my name is Karen and I'll be presenting today about neural networks for quantitative resilience prediction. So first of all, we need to understand what resilience is. Resilience is the ability of a system or a process to recover after uh, disrupt events. Right? And any system can fail, as we all know. So it's really important to identify when the system will go back to a high level of performance. And that's when like resilience engineering comes in handy. So on the right side of the PowerPoint, we have um, a canonical resilience curve in which they, it has like four stages. So the first stage we can see is the prepare stage in which the system is preparing for uh, possible disrupt events. And the second stage is the absorb stage in which a disrupt event starts, happens, and the, the performance of the system reaches um, a minimal level of performance and the system is trying to maintain a minimal uh, functionality of the system. The third stage is the recovery stage in which after reaching the minimal performance, the system is trying to recover to a high level of performance. Some systems can recover to a upgraded performance and uh, if they have, like they can adapt to the environment such as like a, a computational system or um, some other system, but other, other systems can only recover to uh, nominal performance or even a degraded performance if they have some damage on like some equipments or other cases. Um, my goal here, um, we propose three neural networks approach to uh, track and predict, and predict the system resilience, um, including negative and positive factors, um, driving the this, deterioration this and recovery in the system that we call these covariates. So we can describe a discrete resilience curve incorporating covariates as a pre performance at a previous time step plus the change in performance. So here we have um, one of the neural networks approach that we propose. Uh, this is the long short term memory. It is uh, very useful for uh, sequential predictive um, problems in which we include two dependencies, a short-term dependency and also a long-term dependencies, which are represented by both of the loops in the middle. We also apply uh, artificial neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural networks only describe, uh, takes into account the short-term dependencies and artificial neural networks is just like the basic case and uh, only the, pre the present time step is considered in the model. And here we can see the neurons in the input layer represent the covariates of the system. Uh, that can be like some activities that are uh, happening at the same time of the, of the, the system. And um, the output of the system is just the change in performance here. And it'll be the summation of the outputs of the neurons from the hidden layer. So to um, analyze these models, um, we compute like five metrics. Uh, for machine learning models, not, normally we split the data in three parts, uh, training for estimation of the parameters of the models, validation to test the model, doing training to estimate, the, uh, to uh, choose the high parameters of the models, like number of neurons, number of hidden layers, and so on. And then we also have a testing data set, which we use like to have an unbiased analysis of the model. Here, uh, the predictive mean square error computes the mean discrepancy of the model considering just like the testing data set. We also have two special cases, the validation mean square error, which considers only the validation data, and the mean square error, which considers the entire data set. Then we also have the mean absolute percentage error, which quantifies like the mean accuracy of these time-dependent problems. We also uh, calculate the uh, adjusted coefficient of determination, uh, I square adjusted, which just um, measures like the variation of the dependent variable that is explained by independent variables incorporated in the model. To um, identify the best subset of covariates to use in the model, we perform a feature selection technique, which uh, is performed like in two steps. The first step performs a forward selection shirt search to just identify higher correlated out, uh, subset of covariates with the output, but uncorrelated with each other. And then we train this um, 
models with this subset of covariates, and then uh, we identified the one that achieves the highest I square in these models uh, as well. For illustration purpose, we use the most uh, recent recession that happened in the United States during COVID-19. So we collected 19 covariates showing, uh, representing like the number of cases, uh, number of deaths and so on, and uh, some statistical measures as well. And the performance here is the number of jobs uh, during COVID-19. And the change in performance, which is what I try to predict, is the number of jobs that change change it from one month to the other one. So for the first step of the feature selection technique, we selected only four covariates that were like substantial, um, had like substantial information for the model. And then with those four subset of covariates, uh, I created 50 models and then trained them and then analyzed the mean accuracy of them. Uh, here, I also tested like different number of neurons in the hidden layer um, and so on. Mm -hmm. On table four, we have the results of the second step of these models. And then we can see them all in a uh, neural networks model out of a form like the statistical model, but LSTM show like the smallest overall error and the highest I square adjusted as well. Um, here we have the model feed of the best models and uh, the red line, uh, dashed line is the LSTM model. It was the only model that was able to track like the prediction, uh, the sharp drop and also the prediction and validation part, mm -hmm. the other models all underestimated or overestimated the performance of the system. Um, and in conclusion, uh, uh, these are three alternative approaches just to predict the system resilience. And uh, considering this like disrupt events and like activities that were created as well to restore the system. And um, this approach can accurately and effectively track improving the system resilience in several domains. And um, we improve uh, from the statistical model like over 60% on the I square and 34 fold reduction in the PMSE as well. For future research, we were gonna try to explore more challenging data sets, maybe multiple shocks, and also apply alternative neural networks models as well. Thank you. Is there a question for? I have a question. Yeah, sure. Sorry, it's, it's more than one question. So I'll try to fold, fold, fold it all in, in together because um, they're all related. Um, okay, so so have you thought about whether one model could um, describe a system under all conditions or whether you would want to have multiple trainings for different sets of conditions? Uh, so that it's not abstract, I'll use the example of a vehicle, okay. right? I might want one model for dry, hot weather and one model for um, wet, cold, stormy weather, right? Or would you want to somehow fold that all into one model? A related question is, have you thought about um, 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 having multiple response variables and somehow doing a simul, I'll call it a simultaneous fit of, of everything to handle multiple responses simultaneously? Yeah, I think if we include multiple variables, like all different case scenarios in the same model, it would be more interesting to have multiple outputs than yeah. to analyze different uh, characteristics of the same model and then have different outputs. But uh, we can also have multiple models for the same problem. Right. Uh, I mean, in some cases, uh, one condition or one like parameter value could be help the system under a set of conditions, but that same value yeah. might be harmful, right? Like, if, I can't think of an example on the fly, but like tire tread, I would care a lot about tire tread yeah. in like a storm, right? But maybe not quite as much in dry weather. Yeah. Thank you.